From this moment on, you will now be known as Sharkbait. Sharkbait, ooh ha ha! Welcome, brother Sharkbait. Sharkbait, ooh ha ha! Enough of the Sharkbait. Sharkbait, ooh, ha Hey, what's up, YouTube? This is D from Brooklyn, kicking it to you with a Sunday swim. Talk about something that I think comes up very often in the hobby, and that is aquatic pests. And in order to talk to you about the aquatic pests, let's call the camera to focus on one. All right, very popular and one of the biggest, sometimes unseen aquatic pests in the hobby the bristle worm there are probably hundreds and if you're a fisherman like you like me thousands of different salt water worms this is one that is very common and usually raises a lot of alarm in the hobby bristle worms now where an outbreak of bristle worms can be more annoying than really damaging bristle worms are a scavenger you don't necessarily bring them in to your tank, but they can spawn from bacteria, particles, uneaten food. They are a natural occurring item in the hobby. And you will, if not, without seeing it, if you're in this hobby a long time, if you're running your tank for a year or better, it's almost a guarantee that you probably have a bristle worm colony in your tank. It is not a major cause of alarm. One thing that you do want to take note of is when you have your hands in your tank, you want to be conscious of what you're touching in your tank. I know we say it all the time that you should wear gloves. You should be really careful when putting your hands into your tank because there are a lot of things sharp other than bristle worms being one of them. That can irritate your skin, stick you, poke you, all kind of things like that. So, bristle worms ain't going to kill you. And let me take that back because you never know. Mother Nature is a really, really uh, curious mother. But you want to be careful when you're sticking your hands. When you're sticking your hands in the areas like this where you got rock, you got crevices. There are a lot of things that can bother you and bristle worms are one of them. They got a lot, a lot of natural predators like uh, several rasps that feed on bristle worms and if you want to get rid of bristle worms you can poke them out but I found that over the years poking them out and pulling them out ain't going to necessarily solve your problem but you know that is the number one pest that I see a lot in the hobby and there's a lot of overemphasis on them so bristle worms is one thing that you're going to see in their pests. Next thing, serpent stars. Now, if you look at this spot where the bristle worm is, you'll see that huge starfish, serpent stars. Now, mind you, I haven't brought them in here. Serpent stars become part of your ecology. Like the bristle worm, bacteria, uneaten foods, seed, anything. It can come in on a frag in your tank. The smallest little speck or egg can give birth to bristle stars. I'm going to try to locate another one in the rock, but I'm going to show you the perfect example. See that little tentacle there? If I can zero in on it, that is a serpent star in the rock. Now, let me tell you, I love finding these. You ask five different people, they'll give you five different answers. I'm going to tell you why I love these things. See this little spot here in, the, in this rack? They stick into that spot because I don't move it. Now, if I wanted to get them, I could grab that little tentacle and pull that mother out. But let me tell you, they eat gunk and junk and food in spots that I could never get into with the cleaner, the glass cleaner. You can see, you can look at the tank. You can see it looks, oh, spotless. You're like, oh, man, the tank is so clean. But take a look. I don't have any sand in this tank, but I do keep rock rubble. And if you look in that rubble, you'll see all kinds of life. And that's where those little feather dusters, bristle stars, uh, those, br those worms and everything come to life. And they are why I say life finds a way, Mother Nature finds a way. There's no way you can clean that, buddy. But those bristle stars will multiply very fast. So if you do kind of decide you don't want to, 
<laughs> you want to get them out of your tank, you got to do it quick and in a hurry because they multiply fast. Look at this worm. Another one. Very quick. Fast to multiply. And sometimes when you try to pull them out, you cause more damage than good. Because a bristle star can give birth to dozens of bristle stars. So that's the number two bud. Now I'm going to talk about another one that currently isn't in this tank because we kind of established a natural balance. Aptasia. If you look in my main tank, Aptasia is rampant in some areas. I kill it, it comes back, kill it, it comes back. I'm going to tell you, I moved a frag in here and I don't remember which one. I think it was probably a mushroom, probably one of these mushrooms. If you buy these mushrooms in the store, they can be very expensive. I have dozens of them in my main tank, but long story short, I brought a frag in there and on the rock, guess what came with it? Aptasia. Now I'm going to tell you how I got rid of it. I don't see him at the moment. If I put food in here, he'd probably pop up like magic. But I have two very large peppermint shrimp in this tank. And I'm not just saying any old peppermint shrimp. I have two very large peppermint shrimp in this tank not to be confused with camel shrimp which look very much like peppermint shrimp but they have done an excellent job in keeping aptasia out of this tank i had one on that rock and then next you know i saw it up there like they will move around they will move around like any other anemone and that peppermint shrimp did an excellent job of getting rid of it you can hit them with Kalkwasser or Aptasia X, but Aptasia will multiply very fast. And that is one of those pests that if you don't get it under control, you better just start the loving it because once it gets out of hand, it's out of hand in a hurry. It'll make you want to tear your whole tank down. So that is my number one pest, the Aptasia anemone. What a pain in the neck. Now I know what you're saying right now. You're like, yo D, that's just a snail. They're not necessarily a pest. And I was like, well, guess what? What I found the hard way is snails. They do a very funny thing. They multiply. And another thing they do, there's a, there's a pyramid snail, right? He has a very interesting trick. And I kind of learned this the hard way. A pyramid snail will carry itself on the shell of any other snail and what they will do is move around the tank and they will multiply they will lay their eggs on a shell of another snail you will never see those eggs <laughs> you will not see the eggs usually how people figure out they have pyramid snails in the tank you got to look into that tank in the middle of the night and they will come out on your rock in the middle of the night and usually that's how you know you have pyramid snails either you have a clam and it dies or you look at your tank in the middle of the night and you'll see a little tiny tiny very very hard shelled snail and that's usually how you find out you got pyramid snails now I don't see any now but I'm sure there's one or two in here because they only come out at night so another pest usually they start out as something like this see this little dot here that for all intents and purposes could be pyramid snail it's so small can't even focus on it but I'm gonna go in there and pull that bad boy out because usually that's how they start little little tiny little buggers they can multiply like a dickens so like the bristle worms asterina I mean uh, bristle stars pyramid snails are a pest and those I will actually go in and pull them out with tweezers and squish them so pest 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 we all got them I just thought that was a really really interesting thing life finds a way man one thing we do is we try to create life and we don't realize life finds a balance can't have balance without going through those trials and tribulations it's just knowing how to establish a balance you know, control what you don't want, cultivate what you do want, and you learn how to handle it in the long run. But one thing I do know is there are no quick fixes, and you will at some point get something that you don't want in your tank. 
that might even be a little one there. I can't zoom in on it, but I'm trying to find one on the glass. You won't find them during the day. And oh boy, they know where to hide. <laughs> they know where to hide. God give these creatures instincts. And let me tell you, they are not stupid. So this is D signing out. I ain't going to go through an official list. I just thought it was really cool and interesting to see how life finds a way. Everything that you want takes work. And in order to get what you want, you got to get rid of things you don't want. But when you understand how things establish themselves, you kind of got to appreciate it, man. It's a beautiful thing what we do. Creating a little piece of Mother Nature at home. It's awesome, man. So do what you do. Like, post your comments. Click the subscribe button. Ring the bell. Shoot me a note below. What pest have you found in your tank that you have just looked at it and it has driven you up the wall? I'd love to hear what you got to say. Once again, this is D signing off. Sunday swim. Keeping the tanks going. Just learning to appreciate every little thing, man. What we do is amazing. All right. This is D. I'm out. See ya. I kind of like to see what I could find next. I'm out.